Hi, and welcome back. This video is part of the free Blazor Crash Course. In this crash course, we build an actual Blazor WebAssembly application based on .NET 5. If you haven't watched the first episode of this free Blazor Crash Course, you might want to do so to get the most out of it. In this video, we will implement a new page and a form component for our Blazor application. Hi. I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. In this crash course, we focus on Blazor web app development. Let's take a look at what we're going to build. In the completed demo application, we have an earnings page with a table on the left and the form on the right. In this video, we're going to implement the page, the menu item and the form. We're not going to build the table yet. If we click on the menu item, we navigate to the page. If you click on the submit button in the form, we display text on the page. We're going to implement API access in another video of this free Blazor crash course. Additionally, we implement basic input validation for our form. As you can see, if I click on the submit button without entering any information, you'll see an error above the form letting the user know that the subject field is required. Now let's jump into Visual Studio and let's create the earnings page. In the Solution Explorer, right-click on the Pages folder, select the Add menu and click on Razor component in the sub-menu. We name the component Earnings.Razor. The generated component based on the Razor component template contains an H3 tag with the name of the component and an empty Add Code block. To turn the component into a page, we add the Add Page directive above the template. We define the slash earnings route to access the page. The add page directive registers the component as a routable page. Next, we open the nav menu component. Here, we have the three existing menu items. We copy the last item and change the href attribute to match the route we defined in the earnings page before. We also change the text visible on the website to match the name of our page. Last but not least, we change the icon to make it fit the page. Now let's see how the application looks in the browser. Let's run the application. As we can see, there is another menu item at the bottom of the list within the navigation. If we click on the earnings menu item, we navigate to the earnings route as you can see in the browser's address line. Also, we see the content of our earnings page in the content section of the application. Back in Visual Studio, it's time to create the form component and add it to the page. Before we create the new component, let's add a components folder to the application. We right click on the client project and add a new folder. We name the folder components. Next, we right click on the components folder and choose to create another Razor component. We name the component earning form. Now let's replace the generated template with the following card structure. In the body section of the card, we use the edit form component. It's a default component from the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Components.Forms namespace. The edit model allows us to connect an HTML form with an object in the application. It has two properties. The model property accepts a reference to a model and the onValidSubmit property accepts a callback method that is called when a user submits a valid form. We need to create a model class to hold the data for our form. Let's create a new class in the components folder called earning model. Because we want to focus on Blazor development in this crash course, I copy and paste the content of this model class. The earning model defines a date-time property called date, a string property called subject, a category of a custom enum type, and a decimal property called amount. Before we can continue our work on the earning form component, we also need to implement the earning category enum in the shared project. Let's quickly add this code as well. Back in the earning form component, we create a field on the earning model type in the code section. We initialize the date property with the current date.
Next, we define a public void handle valid submit method. This method is called when a user submits a valid form. As I said earlier, we're not calling an API right now, but want to show a text on the component. We create a string field called success and initialize it as an empty string. Within the handle valid submit method, we set the string to success. To make the variable visible in the template, we add it below the edit form tag. Now we are ready to add the form fields to the template. To save us some time, I insert a snippet and take you through the important pieces. For every field, we use a diff with the form group CSS class applied. We also have a label that describes the field. Now let's talk about the Blazor specific part of the form fields. Blazor offers predefined components to handle HTML input fields. For example, we have the input date component that we use to fill the date property. We bind the value of the HTML input field to the model using the add bind value attribute. We provide the field that receives the input value as the value of the attribute. Of course, you have full code completion support. The other fields work similarly to the input date component. Blazor offers an input text component to handle text fields, an input select component to handle dropdowns, and an input number component to handle numeric input fields. All those components have in common that we can bind the value property to the form model. We need to do one last thing before we can run the application. We need to import the namespace for the earning category type used for the category field. At the top of the component, we add a using statement for the finance mentor .shared namespace. Now let's save all the files and let's start the application to see if we can use the form. When we navigate to the earnings page, there is no form. Well, something went wrong. Or isn't it? Let's head back to Visual Studio. Open the earnings component. As we can see, we do not include the earning form component in the template. Let's fix that. Below the H3 tag, we insert a tag with the name of the earning form component. Again, we have code completion that helps us find the correct component. The fully qualified name of the component makes a template hard to read. Let's import the namespace instead. At the top of the earnings component, we add a using statement for the finance mentor.client.components namespace. It allows us to remove the namespace in front of the earning form component tag. Let's start the application again. We navigate to the earnings component and, this time, we see the form on the screen. Let's click the submit button. As soon as we click, the success message appears below the submit button. That's great. However, now that we have the form, we want to implement simple input validation. We want to make sure that the user provides the information we need. First of all, let's define the validation rules. We open the earning model class again and add a few attributes to the property definitions. The properties are decorated with annotations from the system.componentmodel.data annotations namespace. We make all four properties required and limit the length of the subject property to 50 characters. Back in the earning form component, we add two predefined components as children for the edit form component. The data annotations validator component tells the edit form component to respect the data annotations we defined on the model class. The validation summary component outputs the validation errors. Let's start the application again. Once again, we navigate to the earnings page and press the submit button. This time, we do not see the success message because the form is not in a valid state. Instead, we see the error messages provided by the validation summary component above the form fields. We fix the error by providing an input in the subject field and press the submit button again. This time, the success message appears below the submit button. Congratulations! You implemented your first Blazor page and your first form component. This video is the second part of the Blazor crash course. 
You learned how to create Blazor components and how the add page directive allows you to create the route to the component, effectively making it a page. We also looked at how we define a form with different input types and how to handle the submit of a form. We also implemented input validation for the form fields. In the following video of this series, we'll be discussing and implementing API handling. You'll learn how to load data from a backend and save information collected in the form we created in this video. Tell me in the comments what you'd like to learn in a future video of this series. I'll do my best to include it as we go through building this application together. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of the series and see you in the next video.